Welcome in to Moving the Chains. I'm Kevin Thomas alongside Jarrell Hendricks. Got a great interview lineup today for you guys. A very special guest, the head coach of the Louisville Lions, Leon Bulware. Coach, how are you doing today? Oh, good, good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we appreciate your time. We really do. If this is you guys' first time tuning in, be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube at Moving Chains, M O V A N C H A I N S. Also, our uh, website, movingchains.com, and our podcast on Apple, Google, Spotify, et cetera. So, Coach, you were hired in December. You're in your first season as a head coach of the Lions. Let's talk about your coaching career. How did you get to that head job now at Louisville? Yeah, so I've been an assistant, uh, fortunate enough to be assistant, the offense coordinator. Um, and, of course, I was uh, I was the associate head coach over at Indiana when I was there. Um, a little bit about my path. I started off at Lancaster High School under Benny McMurray. I was there for four years. Uh, went to Nation 4, spent four years there with Michael Allen. Uh, from there, I went to uh, Indiana High School. Uh, that's why I was with Horatio Blaze. That's the offense coordinator and um, associate head coach. And then, of course, I was at Northwestern with Paige Wofford for a year before I just kind of had some family deals. Uh, we kind of moved away from the area for a little bit and came came back and was fortunate enough to uh, to land where my feet are right now here at Louisville High School. So, Coach Bulwer, you guys are off to a hot start, 4-0. Uh, let's take a look back to last Friday. You had a tight one against Blacksburg, uh, able to get the win 31-25, to and you guys moved to 4-0 for the first time since 2011. Um, how did the guys perform in that ball game? Uh, well, I mean, to be honest with you, we're, we're a young team. Uh, we're sitting with uh, five seniors on our roster right now to 49. Uh, and a lot of that youth showed up on, on Friday uh, where we had to remind our guys that we don't look at other teams' records. Um, we, we have to go out and play our game of football. So I think a lot of that played in the parts of what we did. We had about four touchdowns called back as well. Um, so with that said, we, we, we felt like we could have bust the game wide open and we failed to execute on some, some ends of our, on our own. So we had to come home come home on Monday and kind of clean up some, uh, some key mistakes and, and get back to work. So for people who aren't familiar with you guys or maybe haven't seen you guys play, what type of offenses and defensive schemes do you guys run? And then do you call plays for either side of the ball? Yeah, so defensively starting first, we are a uh, multiple front. We're in the 50 front at this, at right now. Uh, we want to get – we have a lot of athletes, so we get a lot of athletes on the field. Um, our speed on the, on the defensive side of the ball, we, we fly around and get 11 hats to the ball. Um, defense is led by Trent Usher and uh, Kirk Cannon, their co-coordinators on defense. Uh, and then, of course, offensively, we run an air raid system. And I tell people a lot of times, we say air raid, but we will run the football right at you. Uh, um, and with our running backs who, who can carry the load. So uh, I call our offensive plays, uh, but I have a, a passing game coordinator and Wayne Starks who helps me out a lot. Um, with our pass game, but uh, we'll open up the top. But if you want to sit over top, we'll come underneath you with the run game. So, Coach Bulware, you know, to get to your position as a head coach of a program, you know, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of help. Uh, there's a lot of influences along the way, people that you learn from. Um, who at the college pro or even the prep level, you know, in your experience, that you would say have had influence on your style of coaching? So to be honest with you, I've, at the, the places I've been, I was able to, uh, along the way, take pieces that I felt like was something I wanted to put in terms of me as a head coach. Uh, and so in terms of our offensive style, I took a lot from Northwestern when I was there. Um, I love the pace of the game that we played at. Uh, coach Wofford does an awesome job in terms of the development and the play calling there. So we did a lot of that. Um, mixed in with some of the things that I, I took from uh, Nation Ford and, of course, when I was at uh, Lancaster with Coach McMurray and our run game. Uh, so I did a lot of that. And then, of course, went back to uh, Horatio Blaze, who was our head coach at Indiana and, and, and our multiple front defense. Uh, he did a lot in terms of with our defense. I mean, he's a, a pit All-American at linebacker. So we definitely took a lot from him on the defensive side of the ball and we, and we kind of used it and, and tweaked our own to, to get the system that we have right now. Any guys that you look at on the college or professional level that? that yeah, I, I do a lot of, uh, I, I, well, really, to be honest with you, I, I pick and choose and kind of play around with it. It ain't one, just one guy that I kind of look at. Um, I will say I've been keeping my eye on Shane Beamer right now and just because of the energy that he brings to South Carolina. And I, and I will tell you, I'm not a Carolina fan. <laughs> But at the same time, I'm a Shane Beamer fan. Uh, he, I think he's done an awesome job, um, and, and especially with the relationship that he's built with the players. And that's one thing I talked about when we first got here in December is building the relationships first, and I think that's carried us along the way. Um, and then, of course, uh, a lot of those guys, I'm uh, 
Brett Venables is also one of my favorite, uh, just the energy he brings to the field and the things that he does scheme wise. Um, so I can name a lot of guys, but I think, I, like I said, I like to pick and choose and take small things and put them in, make them in one. Awesome. Well, you guys are playing great on both sides of the ball, averaging about 40 points per game on offense, about only allowing 17 on defense. Who are some of the key guys that are kind of helping you guys, you know, make that happen so far? Yeah, defensively, uh, James Gilcrease, Trey, uh, Trey Smith, Montre Fletcher. Uh, <laughs> I can go on on our defensive side of the ball. Uh, those guys do a good job. Junior Howes on the, at, a, at a linebacker spot for us. He's averaging about 15 tackles a game. Uh, so he's, yeah. he's, he's a playmaker for us on the defensive side of the ball. Um, on the offensive side of the ball, uh, we have Ian Grissom at quarterback, who's he's he's lighting it up right now as a sophomore. Uh, I saw our receiver core is probably a dangerous group of guys that we, we could put on the field. We have about eight receivers, and we try to find ways to get all of them on the field. Uh, so, and all eight have, have scored at least one or two touchdowns this year and broke games open for us. And then, of course, Damian Fee does a good job in the backfield. Uh, we're now starting to split time with uh, Jaquintus Fowles in the running back. But uh, to say all that, I can't I can't go without saying our offensive line. Our offensive line does a really good job for us up front, um, and, and we we credit a lot to them. Our, our quarterback is giving up. Well, our offensive line has only had one sack all season, um, and a lot of that is because the quarterback just held on to the ball. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm really excited about this group of guys. Um, and to say that, uh, well, 22 starters, we're only losing three of them for next year. So, coach, you're taking special over. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so coach you're taking over a program uh that's that's not produced the last few years you know you've had losing seasons there three of the last four um including last year we're down the stretch things just didn't go well losing the last six and missing the playoffs uh what are some specific things that you had to change coming in um that allowed you to get some better participation and kind of revitalize the team going into the season well, I, I think I do a good job in my coaching staff with with the energy we bring to the to the field and to the hallway. Um, and I don't just talk about football when I'm on campus. I talk about every athletic program. I want to see our athletics here succeed and be successful across the board. Um, so I bring a lot of energy every morning when I come to school. Um, and that starts uh, from fist bumping every kid that walks through the door, just saying good morning. Um, and then from there, it carries over to the field. So we we got the music blasting at practice. We hand signal. We I mean we we don't. There's no downtime at practice. We we moving uh, nonstop. Um, and then of course, just making sure our guys understand. Like I'm I'm still here tonight. We every Wednesday we want to we brought the family vibe back. So every Wednesday we sit down in the cafeteria and we have a family meal. And all the families come in and they cater the food for the kids. And we do a good job of just kind of making sure that fellowship and that brotherhood is back. Um, where it needs to be. And I think more than anything, our guys are playing for each other at this moment. Um, and so I think that's going to carry us along the way. There's no individual success that they're worried about right now. I think, and I, we remind them every day, if one person eats, we all eat. Um, and so that's our motto, and that's something that we preach and, and we live by. You know, Coach, the lower levels like 1A and 2A, you always talk about, you know, numbers and who's playing both ways and like that. And we've read yeah. that you guys have had just, you know, a great turnout this year. What does that look like? And, you know, what kind of advantage does that give you guys depth-wise over some of the guys you're going to be playing down the stretch here? So uh, I did my homework and I did my research and uh, when I first took over in uh, December. And one of the biggest things I, I looked at was, hey, man, if we can get our numbers going and our guys are not crossing over, um, we, we can have an advantage. We run an up, uh, up style tempo. Um, so we know teams are going to have some guys crossing over. So we're going to push them and we're going to find out what type of shape they're in. Um, so we try to take them into deep water. So we do a good job of just kind of executing, uh, shaking the hallways up when I first got here. Um, if they can walk in a straight line, we would ask them to play football. Um, we felt like we can get them in the weight room and try to develop them. At some point, they can help us out. Um, and we did a good job with that. And to say, and I'll be totally honest, Richburg had a tradition, had a, had a tradition of strong football. The athletes are still here. Um, they never left. So um, we got them all back out there, and they're doing a good job for us. So going into this week, we're at Wednesday, so you're in the middle of game prep. Uh, you go on the road to Ridge Spring Mineta. Uh, what are some challenges the Trojans bring to your team, and uh, what's it going to take to get a win on Friday night? Yeah, one of the biggest things is, man, Ridge Spring Mineta, first of all, uh, Coach Smith's going to do a good job. He's he's a heck of a coach, um, and I've done my homework on him as well. And the that, that program has had a lot of success um, in the history. I mean, upper state finals, uh, I think, 
2017, if I'm not mistaken, or 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, they have some athletic players there. Um, and so we know it's a road game. Uh, we hoping our fans travel well. Uh, but other than that, we got to play a game of football. We got to line up and play our style of football. Uh, we can't dictate what they're going to do. Uh, or worry, I'm sorry. We can't worry about what they're going to do. We're going to try to dictate the pace of the game and control what we can control, which is go out and play off style football and, and, and make them run what we want them to run and get out of it. So our guys have been prepared. I think we've had, uh, we when we do it every uh, every week with three-day system, um, we had three good days of practice and preparation. Um, so we, I think our guys are right where we need them to be. You know, if you guys get a win this week, it puts you at 5-0. and oh. I think that's the first time since 2016, I believe. You know, how are you, you know, keeping the team focused on the task at hand? Say, hey, guys, region play still coming. We got to keep, you know, keep, keep the blinders on a little bit there. Yeah, we, we stay. We have tunnel vision right now. And and the good thing is our guys have never been there before. Um, and it, I say that's a good thing. And it's also a bad, it could be a bad <laughs> thing as well. Uh, but we remind them. We, we're looking to go 1-0 each week. We don't worry about what happened last week. We don't look at a poll. We don't look at a ranking or what's on social media or what everybody's saying. Uh, we know what we have in our locker room and, and, our, and in our practice field, and, and that's all we can control. Uh, at the end of the day, our goal is to continue to improve every week and, and make sure our guys are peaking at the right time when we hit that region play. You mentioned that. Do you think that your youth in this particular you know, setting with you being a new coach there is an advantage for you guys for this season? I, I really do, uh, because right now everything that we've been going through has been a learning piece for not only the coaching staff, but our players as well. Uh, I mean, we were in a tough environment down in Blacksburg this past week. Uh, the band's loud. I mean, they had a good crowd there in Cherokee County. Um, and we had, a, a, across the board, we had young guys leading us. Um, and it was just, and it was in a tough environment. So, and we and we stayed together. We gelled. We had a, a rough first half and came out and and, and we shut them down in the second half. Uh, so that's that's a credit to our guys. Um, they know how to play the game of football. Um, and so we've really been preaching that and just kind of been staying staying tunnel vision and keep and keep chucking ahead. You guys use the hashtag Win the Day. What does that mean to your program? Uh, so right now we talk about winning a day. We really preach that in terms of winning in the classroom. And that's something that we stole. I stole from Kyle Richardson. Kyle Richardson started win the day over at Northwestern. And we, he came by uh, this spring and we were talking about it. I said, Coach, I'm going to let you know I'm taking it. Um, I put my twist on it because uh, I thought it was a great slogan. Uh, and, and he talks about more than just winning in, uh, on the football field. Um, so we, we took that program and we put it in the classrooms as well. All of our players are going to walk around with the C average. Um, we talk about winning in the community. And then we talk uh, in the acronym, uh, WRN, what's, what's important next? Um, so that's what we break it down to, what's important next. So what's important, uh, last week we won, but what's important next? Uh, so what's the next play? So what are we looking forward to next? So I got to stop you there. You talk about Kyle Richardson. Uh, he's a passing game coordinator at Clemson University now. He's a legend in South Carolina circles for his success at Northwestern. When you were talking with him, you, you mentioned your offense likes to throw the ball. Did you pick his brain a little bit? Oh, um, I definitely we signed him. We definitely did. I signed him. I know he probably had to go visit another school, but we signed him about two hours just talking uh, and, and, and just talking about concepts and just uh, – want to marry some different formations and a lot of things that he he brought to the table is some of the things a lot of stuff that we use right now so we definitely i wouldn't let them leave out that door without getting to having that conversation <laughs> that's awesome that's right, that's right. well coach got a couple of easier ones here to kind of wrap you up here first off you know drill and i you know we, we don't know what these young kids are into these days but what's yeah. on your pregame playlist uh so uh it's gonna sound funny but uh Every Friday, I, I have a free period. So I, I'm in here listening to something old school, the uh, Ozzy Brothers, okay. Adele, something to kind of slow my – I want to slow things down before the crazy chaoticness happens. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm an old school. Uh, like I said, the Ozzy Brothers are either something or uh, Dale that can kind of slow the pace down a little bit for me mentally. Hey, I'm right there with you. I mean, Ron's got the – Ronnie Isley's got the smoothest <laughs> vocals I've ever heard. Exactly. It's got, you got, you got, you know, Eddie on this on the on the guitar there. So I, yep. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I definitely like to slow it down. And moving on, uh, you know, we were we were speaking off air about not having a wrestling program yet at Louisville, uh, but that's kind of where you cut your teeth in coaching circles around the state. You won three A 
two back, you won back to back three A state championships uh, while a coach at Indian Land. How special was that for you? Man, it was amazing. It was amazing. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, it, it, it reminds me of the group I have here now. Uh, we were a young team when I first took over, and I remember going into the second. I can remember like yesterday, going to Emerald for the second round of the playoffs, and we lost that night uh, by three points um, with a young team. And I told them if we stay together and continue to work in the offseason, we, we'll have something special. And the following year, we won a state title. Uh, and then we, again, we were fortunate enough to win back-to-back -back, uh, championships there. Uh, like I tell people, uh, they ask a lot. And it's, the, the first one's easier to get than the second one. And so, uh, really, our, our guys stayed humble and they did a good job. But it was a special moment. Uh, be honest with you, a lot of the things that we did success-wise, I, I, is, is they, I'll be honest with you, I – I'm a next, so what, what's next? Um, and so we really don't talk about it much here. Uh, I don't bring it up because I haven't done anything for these guys here in terms of state championship. Um, so I try to take care of my guys here now, but it was, it was definitely a memorable experience. So coach, so say that drill and I say we're on the road over in Richburg, where, where are we going to eat? You know, what's your favorite spot over there? You know, we're big. Man, make sure you stop by the, uh, the front porch. Uh, front porch. Okay. Don't, don't go on a Tuesday on a Wednesday or Tuesday. I'm sorry. They don't open up on a Tuesday, but make sure you stop by the front porch right beside the KFC uh, and across from Zaspis. Uh, you, if you want some old school food, uh, they're going to take care of you over there. So what's the go-to meal at, at the front porch? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a seafood guy myself. A lot of people going over to get the chicken, the mashed potatoes, the rice and, rice and gravy, mac and cheese, cornbread. But I'm going over and I'm getting a piece of fish. <laughs> so um, I can eat fish every single day. Uh, so. I'm a fish guy. They do a good job with the fish and uh, shrimp and hush, uh, hush puppies and all that. Awesome. So, yeah, you're in the midst of, of a great season, a great start at 4-0, looking to go 5-0 this Friday. Um, you mentioned that you have a young team. Uh, so what are some of your goals for this 2022 season for Louisville? Uh, we broke it down in, in terms of uh, non-conference, conference, and then postseason. Right now, uh, our focus is to finish out the the, the – non-conference schedule as strong as we possibly can. Uh, we know we have a, uh, two good teams ahead of us right now in front of us that we got to prepare for, um, taking it one week at a time. And then once we get to our conference schedule, we'll break that down into another segment of our, of our season. And then as long as we take care of our conference, we'll be looking forward to the postseason. Um, so other than that, we kind of don't look forward to anything other than the, what we have in front of us with Rich Primanetta. Um and we know we can't we can't look around them and look past them. We gotta look right in front of us right now. Um, so we're looking forward to this Friday night. Well, coach, this has been great. Definitely want all of our viewers to check you out on Twitter and Facebook. You do a great job updating the Louisville program, keeping guys up with stats and all that. Definitely check them out on social media. Like I mentioned, follow us, please. If it move and change, everybody. Um, do you have any else for coach before we let him go tonight? Oh. Uh, before I get too serious, where do I get one of those uh, sweet baseball lids right there? That's yeah, we, uh, you you show up down here. We got we got plenty of them. We got uh, we I think we have about four different hats. We'll get you taken care of. Uh, coach right. Barron, our baseball coach, does a good job of making sure we look good. Um, so so he helps us out. People who are listening, you know, the audio version, make sure you go watch the video version of this on YouTube or wherever. This is a sweet lid, my man. Has <laughs> right here. Uh, but, yeah. I put this one special on just for the interview. I took my uh, my practice hat off. I <laughs> we love appreciate it. I love it. No, I just want to wish you continued success with the program. Uh, really outstanding. Ian Grissom, for sure, has been on our radar for the last few weeks. Um, he's just putting up great numbers, and it's cool to see a young player uh, take over. It's great to see that you have this initial success so far. Um, so congratulations to you there. Uh, we wish you well this Friday, and we wish you well as you start um, region play in a couple weeks. And, uh, you know, just thank you for your time. Well, I appreciate you guys having us on. Yeah, Coach, we really appreciate it. Look forward to stopping by and getting to meet you here sometime soon. And uh, best of luck Friday night. Yes, sir. If y'all ever in town, swing by. We'll make sure we take care of you. Will do.